Senate Bill 1663, an act concerning abortion. Third reading of the bill. Senator O'Malley. Uh, Mr. President, again, thank you. This is the third component of the Born Alive package. Um, and what it provides is that a child born under any circumstances would receive all reasonable measures consistent with good medical practice. It also requires a second physician to give an opinion of viability um, and to deliver such reasonable measures of care uh, as are defined in 1663. Again, I'd be happy to answer any questions there may be. Is there any discussion? Senator Cullerton. Either with the sponsor yield? Sponsor indicates uh, yield. Senator O'Malley, which one of these bills was the Medical Society, uh, did they testify against? Was it all three of them or just this one? Senator O'Malley. Uh, you know, I, I really can't speak for them, but I suspect their major issue was with 1661. Any further discussion? Senator Obama. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, will the sponsor yield for questions? Sponsor indicates he'll yield. Yeah, just along the same lines, um, obviously there's an issue that we've debated extensively both in committee and on the floor, so uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to belabor it, but uh, I did want to point out, as I understood it during the course of the discussion in committee, one of the things that we were concerned about, or at least I expressed some uh, concern about, was what impact this would have with respect to the relationship between the doctor uh, and the patient and what liabilities the doctor might have in this situation. Uh, so can you just describe for me, under this legislation, what's going to be required for a doctor um, to meet the requirements that uh, you've set forth? Senator O'Malley. Senator Obama, first of all, uh, there is established um, under this legislation that a child born under uh, such circumstances would receive all reasonable measures consistent with good medical practice, and that's as defined, of course, by the, um, you know, the practice of medicine in the community where this would occur. It also requires, in two instances, that um, that an attending physician uh, be be brought in to assist and advise uh, with respect to the issue of viability, and in particular. Uh, where there's a, there's a suspicion on behalf of the um, physician that the child uh, may, may, be, may be viable, that there's a suspicion. So that the attending physician would make that decision as to whether that would be the case. The other one is where the child is actually born alive and then is, is, al is actually born alive, in which case then the uh, physician um, would call as soon as practically possible for uh, a second physician to come in and determine the viability. Senator Obama. So, uh, and again, I, I, I'm not going to prolong this, but I just want to be clear uh, because I think this was the source of the objections of the medical society. Uh, as I understand it, this puts uh, the burden on the attending physician uh, who has determined since they were performing this procedure that in fact this is a non-viable fetus, uh, that uh, if that uh, fetus or child, however way you want to describe it, is now uh, outside the mother's womb, uh, and the doctor continues to think that it's non-viable, but um, there's, let's say, movement or some uh, indication that in fact um, they're not just coming out uh, limp and uh, dead, that in fact they would then have to call a second physician to monitor and check off and make sure that uh, um, this is not a live child that could be saved. Is that correct? Senator O'Malley. In, in the first instance, um, obviously the physician that is performing the procedure would make the determination. The second situation is where the child actually is born and is alive. And then there is an assessment, an independent assessment of viability by, an, by, a, by another physician at the soonest practical date or time. Senator Obama? Let, let me just go to the bill uh, very quickly. Uh, essentially, I think, as, as this emerged during debate and during committee, um, the only plausible rationale to my mind for this legislation 
would be if you had a suspicion that a doctor, the attending physician, uh, who has made an assessment that this is a non-viable fetus and that, let's say, for the purposes of the mother's health, is being, uh, th that labor is being induced, that that physician, A, is going to make the wrong assessment, and B, if the physician discovered after the in, uh, labor had been induced that, in fact, he made an error or she made an error and, in fact, that this was not a non-viable fetus but, in fact, a live child, that that physician of his own accord or her own accord would not try to exercise the sort of medical measures and practices that would be involved in saving that child. Now, if, if you think that there are possibilities that doctors would not do that, then maybe this bill makes sense. But I, I suspect, and my impression is, is that the medical society suspects as well that doctors feel that they would be under that obligation, that they would already be making these determinations, and that essentially adding a, an additional doctor who then has to be called in an emergency situation to come in and make these assessments is really designed simply to burden the original decision uh, of the woman and the physician to induce labor and perform an abortion. Now, if that's the case, uh, and, and I know that some of us feel very strongly one way or another on that issue, that's fine, but I think it's important to understand that uh, this issue ultimately is about abortion and not live births, because if these are children who are being born alive, uh, I at least have confidence that a doctor who is in that room is going to make sure that uh, they're looked after. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? If not, Senator O'Malley, to close. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the comments from the previous speaker, but I can assure you that the interest of everybody, I think, in, in this state would be to protect the life of a child, including the physicians who are involved there. And I believe that um, the second opinion physician would actually, uh, in many ways, protect not only the interests of that child, which is its primary responsibility, uh, but uh, to make sure that uh, if there was, was any error in judgment of any kind by the, the, the primary physician, that, that uh, the, the, the burden association associated with, with uh, that failure in decision um, would be minimized. And so I request your support of this legislation so that this package can move to the Illinois House where it can be given some serious consideration. Thank you.